All right, so monotonicity. We'll get to that word in a minute. But what we're going to do in order to discuss monotonicity is we're going to find the critical points of this function right here and talk about it. Okay, now you guys already learned how to find the critical points. All you got to do is find f prime and set this thing equal to zero. So I'm taking the derivative. That's what I get. I set it equal to zero. And now I'm going to move 27 to the other side. Then divide both sides by three. Now square root both sides. So we have critical points at x equals positive 3 and x equals negative 3. Um, and what we learned about critical points is that that's where your local mins and local maxes are, or absolute max and absolute min. So here we have it at negative 3, and then we also have it at 3. And what we did before is we would take uh, the negative 3, we'd plug it in and find its value, and we'd take the positive 3, plug it in and find its value. 34? Good, and if you plug in positive 3, what would you get? Negative 72? 74. Okay, so just, um, now we don't have a closed interval here, um, so that means we can't call these uh, absolute max or absolute mins, but they can be called local mins and local maxes. Chances are um, this one's going to be our local minimum, and this one right here is going to be a local max. But how do we know that for sure? Um, so, <clears throat> this is normally called a sine line graph. Now, I put the y-axis in there uh, just because that's familiar to us. Um, I want to know what the function is doing in this interval right here. I should put an arrow right there because it goes that way. In this interval right here and this interval right here. What is my function doing in those intervals? How can I know if it's increasing or decreasing in those intervals? And that's what we touch on. Um, we're touching on monotonicity now. Monotonicity just says between these critical points, the graph is always doing increasing or it's always decreasing. So right here, it's always increasing or decreasing. Here, it's always increasing or decreasing. And in our last interval, it's always increasing or decreasing. So how can we know that? How can we know if it's increasing? <coughs> one way, which is what you guys said, is by getting uh, two, two points in that interval and seeing if you're increasing or decreasing, because you can judge off those two points if it's increasing or decreasing. The other way, which is what we're going to use, is the slope. How can we know the slope in that interval? How can I know the slope in this green interval right here? <coughs> Alright, well, we've got the derivative right here. Plug in negative 4 or negative 5, negative 6, right? It doesn't matter, just as long as there's a number in there. So you take a, let's take negative 4, for example, and we'll plug that into our f prime. So we have negative 4 right there. And I plug it in, I get 3 times negative 4 squared minus 27. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. Positive 16 times 3 is going to be 48 minus 27. Is that going to be positive or negative? Uh, Positive or negative? Positive. Sorry, I know you guys are ready. Okay, that's going to be positive. That's all I really care about. I don't need the exact number. So in the green interval, we know it's going to be positive. Now, what about the blue interval? Which number would you guys like to uh, test? Yeah, let's plug in zero. That's a magical number. We have three times zero squared, and we're going to subtract 27 from that. Uh, that's going to be negative 27, right? Okay, so that's negative, so it's negative in this interval. And then finally, the last interval, the red one, uh, let's plug in 4 again. So 3, 4 squared, isn't that going to be the same result as before? Yeah, because last time it was a negative 4, but we square it, so the negative doesn't matter anymore. This is going to be 16, this is going to be 48, and then we're going to subtract 24, that's going to be a positive number. So, you have positive. All right, now, can you tell, because of you know where it's increasing and decreasing, can you tell if negative 3 is going to be um, a maximum or minimum? 
Can you tell? Can you tell? Can you tell? We know it's increasing over here, and then it starts decreasing. Is this a maximum or minimum? That's a max. Okay, so at negative 3, we're going to find our max. And right here, because it decreases then increases, that means we're going to find our minimum. Well, a local minimum, a local max. We don't know if they're absolutes because we'd have to know the rest of the graph, either by looking at the graph or by having a closed interval. Okay, this is what the graph actually looks like. Okay, at negative 3, we have a max. At positive 3, we have a minimum. This is our graph. This down here is our... Um, is our, our f prime function. So this is the graph of the derivative. Uh, notice that before, which was our green interval, before uh, negative 3, this is positive in the positive area. It's above the x-axis. Uh, between these two, it's in the negative area. It's below the x-axis. And then at the end, it's positive. It's above the x-axis. Okay? And then here it's... a uh, Increasing, this is our green interval. Here it's decreasing, and then here it's increasing. All right, so uh, what, we, what we did, what we created was called a sine line graph, okay? It's so you can figure out where the graph is increasing and decreasing, and that can tell us uh, where, what, what, what our maximum points are and what our minimum points are going to be. That's called, that's what the use of monotonicity. Monotonicity is just that, uh, between the critical points, it's always going to be doing the same thing. It's always going to be increasing or it's always going to be decreasing. You only have to pick one point to test. You don't have to pick a bunch of points. That's what monotonicity allows us to do.